Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Praise you, mighty God, Jesus. Turn with me, if you would, to the book of 2 Peter. Second Peter chapter three. Somebody said I was long winded last night. So I added a half an hour to this evening's message. Amen. And I made a new rule. If you make it through the song service, you have to stay till the altar call. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Peter in chapter 3 and starting at verse 1. It says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which uh, I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, uh, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets uh, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since our fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But the heavens and the earth which are now, everybody say now. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word, of, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. I'd like to preach to you tonight about being reserved uh, unto fire. Pastor, would you please pray? Amen. You may be seated. It says here that uh, in the second epistle, starting in chapter 3, the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Peter here wanted to stir up uh, the pure minds of the church. Amen. He wanted to stir their minds up. He wanted to wake them up. Uh, amen. It seems that they had uh, fallen asleep. It seems that they had uh, laid down and decided it was time to relax. Uh, maybe it was time they could put their sword down or their plow down and they could take a little break. Uh, but he said, no, it's not time for a break. Uh, it's not time for vacation. It's not time for you to go to sleep yet. Uh, he said, I want to stir up your pure minds. Uh, by way of remembrance. Uh, he said, I want you to remember something. And what he brings on in these next verses of Scripture are supposed to stir us up as a church. Uh, it's supposed to stir us up inside. Uh, it's supposed to wake us up. Uh, amen. He says that I want you to be mindful of the words which were spoken by the holy prophets and the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, uh, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, uh, and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. 
There are many in the world today that would try to hold up uh, the various sciences and say uh, that nothing has changed uh, since the world was created, uh, that all things continue as they have always continued, uh, and that there's been no change and there never will be change. Uh, He goes on to say, uh, whereby, he says in verse 5, for this uh, they are willingly ignorant of, uh, that by the word, everybody say word, uh, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Uh, Peter says that there are certain individuals that are willingly ignorant of the fact uh, that there used to be another world uh, not like this one. Uh, there was another world uh, a way back when uh, that perished by water. It seems that the people in that world uh, they didn't obey God. Uh, they didn't listen to God. Uh, they turned their back on God. Uh, and they were drinking and marrying and giving in marriage uh, and going about their sinful lifestyles. Uh, and God got angry with them. Them, uh, and he brought his judgment down on them uh, and he destroyed that world uh, with water and there's people in this world uh, that are willingly ignorant of that fact uh, they don't want to think about it uh, they don't want to entertain it in their mind uh, they don't want anybody to know that the judgment of God uh, came down uh, on this world at a certain time in the history of this world They want to deny it. They want to pretend it didn't happen. They try to raise up sciences to prove uh, that it didn't happen. Because uh, if it did happen, if it is true, if God really did destroy the world by water then, uh, then He really is going to destroy it in the future by fire. And they don't want to think about it. Uh, They don't want to worry about it. Uh, They don't want to get their lives right with God. And so they try to disprove it. It says they're willingly ignorant of this fact. I want you to know tonight, it's a fact. I want you to know tonight, there was another world. There were people that populated it. Uh, I read in one commentary that they believed that there were upwards of 3 billion people in the world at the time of Noah. 3 billion people is a lot of people. There's just over 5 billion in the world today. And they think it's overcrowded now. We're going on 6 billion. In the days of Noah, there were estimated 3 billion people. And they were going about doing the work that they did. There were farmers plowing the fields. Uh, There were brick masons building buildings. Uh, There were governors in charge of cities. Uh, There were housewives and husbands and children and schools and synagogues. Uh, And there were people preaching in synagogues. Uh, And there were people going about buying and selling and marrying and giving in marriage. Uh, And there was a whole world that existed uh, at a certain time and place uh, in the history of this world. And one day God looked down on that world and He saw that it was in sin. He saw that it was in sin and He searched the world and He only found one man that was righteous by the name of Noah. He went to Noah and he told Noah, he said, I can't stand the sin any longer. It abhors me. It makes me sick. I can't stand it. I'm going to bring judgment down on this world. I want you to build an ark. I want you to populate it with the the animals of the world. I'm going to bring judgment down. I'm going to cause it to rain. And the rains are going to come up out of the fountains of the deep. And I'm going to drown the world by water. So Noah began to build his ship. Uh, He began to build his boat. uh, And the Bible says that he was a preacher of righteousness. uh, And I believe that sometime uh, in between his his sleeping and his building on the boat, uh, he went to a synagogue somewhere or he got up on a tree stump somewhere and he began to preach righteousness. Uh, He began to tell the people, you better repent of your sins. Uh, You better get right with God uh, because the judgment of God is coming down on this world. I don't believe he was the only preacher I just believe he was only the only preacher of righteousness 
I believe there are other synagogues. Uh, there are other meeting houses. Uh, there are other preachers. Uh, and they were preaching other doctrines. Uh, and they were preaching other messages. Uh, health uh, and wealth. Uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, and oh, don't worry about uh, what that crackpot's preaching. Don't worry about uh, that church on the hill. That crazy Noah. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, and they told their congregations, uh, everything's just going to be all right. You don't have to listen to him. You don't have to feel condemnation. I want you to know my Bible talks about condemnation. It says uh, that you are condemned if you're not born again of the water and the Spirit uh, and living holy and righteous uh, unto Jesus Christ. uh, You're condemned. Uh, Amen. Uh, It talks about conviction. If you are born again uh, and you're not living right uh, with the Word of God uh, and the preacher preaches to you uh, and you feel that conviction down in your heart, uh, you need to do something. You need to get right with God. Noah, he built the ark. Uh, He went and got the animals and he, he populated the ark with them. Then God told him, No, it's time. Get on the ark. And he got on the ark, him and seven members of his family. And they went and got on the ark. And they were on that ark for seven days before the rain came. Seven days they were in that ark. And if you can imagine the townspeople, hey, did you hear about Noah? Yeah, I heard the other day they all went and got in that ark with a bunch of animals. Uh, Isn't that funny? Yeah, he said something about the judgment of God. He said something about rain coming down from heaven. Water coming up out of the fountains of the deep. Uh, I don't see anything, do you? No. Hey, let's go talk to this Noah character. Hey, Noah. Noah, what are you doing in that boat? Uh, What are you doing in there with all those animals? Uh, Are you crazy, Noah? You ought to come out here. There's sunshine out here. There's birds flying around out here. There ain't no judgment of God coming. Come on out, Noah. Come on out and play. They stayed in the ark. Two days, three days, four days, five days, six days. uh, And on the seventh day... My Bible says on the seventh day, the clouds began to form in the sky. There was thunder rolling, uh, lightning flashed, uh, and water started to fall out of the sky. The fountains of the deep started overflowing the banks, uh, and pretty soon uh, the, the villages were being flooded. Uh, the cities were being flooded. Uh, people were trying to grab their belongings uh, and get to high ground. Uh, they were trying to get over there to where the boat was, uh, where Noah was. Uh, hey, Noah! Open the door. We believe you now. Hey, Noah, let me in. I got a little child here. Let me in, Noah. But Noah couldn't let him in because God closed the door. Time for salvation was over. Time for judgment had come. And every man and every woman and every child and every animal that was not on the ark perished by water. They all drowned. And there are people that would be willingly ignorant of this fact. They don't want to believe it. They don't want to know it. They don't want to hear it. It says, Whereby the world that then was, uh, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now, everybody say now. But the heavens... And the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The same world that we live in right now is reserved unto fire by the same word of God that destroyed the old world. By the same powerful, sure word of God that brought judgment down in Noah's day. This world that we live in is reserved unto fire. It's reserved unto judgment. Fire is going to come down. I'm telling you, this world is going to burn. It's going to burn. It's going to burn. Just as sure as the old world perished by water, this world is going to burn. 
It's got reservations. You know what reservations are? You get a reservation, you get a time and a place to appear somewhere, to be somewhere, to take a room or a car or to speak or whatever the case may be. This world's got reservations. God has set it down in the timetable of life. He said, on this date, at this time, I'm going to burn the world and everything in it. And he gave this word to the apostles. He gave this word to the prophets. He gave this world to the men of God uh, to speak it to this world. Uh, you better get ready. You better get right with God. Uh, you better make sure your walk with God. Uh, because I'm telling you tonight, uh, as sure as I'm standing here tonight, uh, this world uh, is going to burn uh, and everything in it. Uh, God is going to bring judgment uh, on this world for sin. And you need to make sure that you're on the ark. The ark is preparing. The ark is preparing. Hey man, you're sitting in it right now. You can get out and walk off back to town and laugh with the unbelievers if you want to. But I'm telling you tonight, this is the ark. And the ark is preparing. And you can get on the ark before judgment falls. And you can be saved. You can escape judgment. Hallelujah. Or you can be willingly ignorant of the fact. Ignorant. That's right. God's people aren't ignorant. God's people are smart. They're intelligent. They're saving their souls for eternity. That's smart business if you ask me. Everybody else is ignorant. That's what the book says. They're willingly ignorant. Amen. So you can be smart or you can be ignorant. The choice is yours. It says that it is reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But notice what Peter says right after that. As soon as he gives this uh, scathing account of future judgment, he says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise as some men count slackness. But is long suffering. Everybody say long suffering. Long suffering to usward. Not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Uh, I was telling a man, I was witnessing to him when I was working at a local restaurant, uh, and I was telling him about the judgment of God uh, and how the judgment of God came down upon the world uh, in the past uh, and how the judgment of God was going to come down again uh, in the future. And he said, uh, my God wouldn't do that. That's not my God. I said, well, that's the God of the Bible. So, if that's not your God, your God is not the God of the Bible. He said, I don't care what you say. My God would not destroy this world. He wouldn't kill anybody. I told him, all I know is what the book says. The book says He destroyed it by water. And everything perished. And he's going to destroy it again. Amen. And I'm not about to question God. <clears throat> it's his business. I'm just telling you what the book says. But it's interesting that Peter says right after this, God is long-suffering. Yeah, he did destroy the world uh, by water. And he is going to destroy it by fire. But he's long-suffering. He loves you. He doesn't want you to perish. He's trying to give you ample warning. He's reaching out for you even now. He's reaching out to you with hands of love, of peace, of grace. He's trying to draw you into the ark. He gave those people 
ample warning in Noah's day. I believe Noah warned him for over a hundred years that God was going to destroy the world. And you're sitting in here tonight and you are getting warning tonight. You're served ample warning tonight. Jesus is coming. He's coming in flaming fire to take vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. I'm telling you tonight, uh, Jesus is coming. And you need uh, to get yourself right. Uh, you need uh, to get ready for Jesus. God wants everybody to come to repentance. God wants every man, woman, and child in this world to be saved. If we got our just judgment from God, He'd have destroyed us all already. If we got what we deserved, uh, we'd all be dead. That's right. God is holy. God is holy. Be ye holy. Amen. To come into the presence of God in a state of unholiness is to set yourself up for swift destruction. And we have to get ready to meet Him. He's coming. We have to get ready to meet Him. Amen. we got to turn from our sinful lifestyle. We need to turn from our wicked ways. We need to stop smoking and drinking and lying and cussing and stealing and cheating. We need to turn from a sinful lifestyle toward Jesus Christ uh, and live holy and righteous uh, until Jesus comes. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, uh, and the elements shall melt uh, with fervent heat. Uh, the earth also and the works therein uh, shall be burned up. That's what the book says. It's coming. Don't fool yourself. The day's coming. Amen. In verse 11 it says, Seeing then that all these things... Uh, shall be dissolved. What manner or what sort of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation or in all holy behavior or in all holy conduct and godliness seeing then that this world is going to burn. Seeing then that the judgment of God is coming down on this world. Knowing what I preach to you tonight. Knowing down in your heart that the judgment of God is coming. How are you going to act? How are you going to walk? How are you going to conduct yourself in this life? Knowing that the judgment of God is coming down on this world. What are you going to do with yourself? What are you going to do with your life? I'm speaking the truth to you tonight. I'm telling you the truth tonight. The judgment's coming. So what are you going to do with yourself? Uh, Peter's asking the church, uh, what are you going to do now? That you know that the world's going to burn. Your house is going to burn. Your car is going to burn. Uh, all your fancy clothes are going to burn. Your bank account is going to burn. Uh, everything you hold so dear in your life uh, is going to burn. Now what? Now what do you do with yourself? With this kind of knowledge? Just go on living life like you have been? Just go on sinning? Just go on smoking and drinking and living it up uh, like nothing's going to happen? Like nothing's going to change. You're just going to be willingly ignorant of this fact. Are you going to do something? Are you going to change your life? Are you going to change the way you live? Are you going to change the way that you are? So that when this time comes. So that when judgment comes. So that when Jesus comes. You'll be ready. You need to get ready. You need to get ready. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Let's worship Jesus. 
Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? That word godliness means God consciousness. There are many in the world today who are seeking a higher level of consciousness. There are many books out on how you can obtain higher consciousness. But I want you to know tonight that the highest level of consciousness is God consciousness. Acknowledging God, knowing God, communing with God, fellowship with God, living in obedience to God. The highest level of consciousness that you can achieve in this world is God consciousness. Uh, that means uh, that morning, noon, and night uh, you are conscious uh, of the fact uh, that God uh, is coming. Uh, you're conscious uh, of the fact uh, that there is a God uh, and He set a judgment day uh, and you're going to live holy and righteous uh, before God. Morning, noon, and night. Uh, God consciousness. Uh, hallelujah. So many times we just want to forget all about God. I don't want to think about Him today. I'm going to run off and do this. Uh, I'm going to go play that. Uh, I'm going to go jump into this. Uh, I don't want to think about God. It's because uh, if you think about God, uh, you'll know uh, the light will shine upon your sin. Uh, it'll be revealed uh, and you'll be pricked in your heart. And so you try to forget God. They push God out of their minds. Push Him out of their heart. Push Him out of their family, out of their house, out of their very lives. You can't do that anymore. You can't do that any longer. Jesus is coming. It's time you looked your sin square in the face. It's time you looked at your life square in the face. It's time you allowed God's light to shine in your life uh, and reveal the things in your life uh, that you know is not right with God. Uh, it's time you got rid of them. Uh, it's time you turned your back on it. Uh, it's time you started living right. Uh, it's time you gave your life to Jesus. It's time you got right with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians in chapter 5 and verse 11. I told my wife I wasn't going to preach like this tonight. I said, I'm just going to teach tonight. She said, no, you're not. She said, we won't have church if you don't preach. Well, praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11 says, Knowing therefore the terror. Everybody say terror. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade. Everybody say persuade. We persuade men. Amen. You need to get this, especially if you're saved. If you're saved, you need to get this down in your heart. You need to stop living your lackadaisical life, coming in here, sitting on a pew, and doing nothing. Amen. God didn't call you to sit on a pew. God called you to witness, to testify, to teach, to preach, to teach Bible studies. Do something. Warn somebody. Tell somebody about the gospel. Amen. Said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That word terror means to cause fright. Fear. To be scared. Have you ever been scared? Have you ever had fear grip your heart? Man, I can remember when I was a little boy and it got dark. I got scared. I used to be afraid of the dark. I used to be afraid of the monsters that were out in the dark. 
And they were going to get me. And there was a big ugly one that lived right underneath my bed. And if I tried to get out of bed to turn on the light to scare off the monsters, I was just sure that he was going to grab me by the foot and drag me under the bed. And that would be the end of me. And so I laid in bed all night, terrified. That's right. That's being scared. And the Bible says, knowing the terror of the Lord. Now understand the terror of the Lord. Now understand the fear of the Lord. Now I'm scared of the Lord. Now I'm scared of judgment day. Now I'm scared of a lake of fire that burneth forever and ever. That scares me. That puts fear down inside my heart. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be cast in a lake of fire. That scares me. And I don't want you to be cast into one either. I know that if you die in your sins, or if you're still in your sins when Jesus comes, you're going to be cast in a lake of fire. And I'm scared for you. I'm afraid for you. Amen. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade. Man, that word persuade means to apply persuasion. To prevail upon. To win over. To bring about a change of mind by influence of reason or moral considerations. Uh, that's what we're supposed to be doing in this last hour. We're supposed to be trying to persuade people. We're supposed to be telling people, you need to get saved. Uh, you need to get right with God. Uh, you need to change your life. Uh, you need to repent uh, because Jesus is coming. Uh, judgment is coming. Uh, you're going to get cast in a hellfire. We're trying to persuade people. We're trying to win them over. We're trying to get them uh, to make a decision in their life. Uh, to change their lives. Uh, change their mind. Uh, change their thinking. Uh, change their heart. Uh, change the way they live. I'm trying to persuade you tonight. You need to change the way you're living tonight. You need to wake up. You need to realize... That a life of sin is going to cause you to be lost. A life of sin is going to drag you down to a devil's hell. A life of sin is going to take you to a place that's scary, that's fearful. If you're not afraid of going to hell, friend. If you're not afraid of a lake of fire that burneth forever and ever. Then you are ignorant. Amen. I told a man I worked with one day, I said, you want to know what hell's like? He said, yeah, what's hell's like? I grabbed his hand and I tried to stick it in the French fryer. 400 degrees of oil. I tried to put his hand in there and he, he was fighting with me and trying to pull it back. Uh, I let go and he looked at me and said, you're crazy. Yeah, maybe I am. But I told him, I said... Why wouldn't you let me put your hand in there? He said, because it would burn. I said, exactly. Hell is going to burn. Hell is hot. Hell is for eternity. And you need to realize uh, it's nothing to mess with. Uh, it's not going to be no playground. Uh, you ain't going to have no fun there. It's going to burn. It's going to burn. It's going to burn. You need to change your life. You need to get right with God because Jesus is coming. Judgment is coming. You think I'm crazy? I'm not crazy. I'm telling you what the Word of God says. Uh, I'm telling you what this Word of God says tonight. Uh, it says Jesus is coming. Uh, judgment is coming. Uh, and you need to get right uh, with God. You need to get right with God. If you feel conviction in your heart, don't run from it. If you feel the Holy Ghost moving on you to get your life right with God, don't run from it. Don't hide from it. Don't turn a deaf ear tonight. You need to listen tonight. You need to obey tonight. You need to get right with God tonight. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire. Everybody say on fire. Being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt. Everybody say shall melt. Shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent. Be diligent that ye may be found of Him in peace without spot and blameless. That word shall means that it will definitely happen. God said it's going to happen. You can bank on it. Amen. It's going to happen. And we need to be diligent. We need to make sure that we're right with God. It says that we need to be diligent that we may be found of Him in peace without spot and blameless. Blameless. That means we're doing everything within our power to live according to the Word of God. Everything within the power of the Holy Ghost that dwells inside of us. Amen. If you're living short of that, if you're not living to the best of your ability, to the best of the Spirit of God that is inside of you, that is trying to give you the strength uh, and the power and the ability to live holy and righteous uh, in this present world, you're cheating yourself. You're cutting your own throat tonight. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. Revelation chapter... day and night forever and ever and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found uh, written in the book of life uh, was cast uh, into the lake uh, of fire. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The world is going to burn. Death is going to burn. Hell is going to burn. The beast is going to burn. The false prophet is going to burn. The devil is going to burn. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life is going to burn. Don't be ignorant tonight. The Word of God says... 
everything and anything that's not right with Him is going to burn. I read a story about some soldiers who were on a troop ship. They were going across the ocean, it seems, being taken to the battlefield. And they crowded around their chaplain, the man of God on the troop ship. And they asked the chaplain, Do you believe in hell? And the chaplain turned to the soldiers and he said, I do not. He said, I don't believe in hell. The soldiers then said, well then, will you please resign? Because if there's no hell, we don't need a chaplain. And if there is a hell, we don't need to get led astray. Amen. You need to realize something tonight. Uh, there is a hell. There is a God. And there's a devil. There's a heaven. And there's a hell. And you don't need to be led astray. You need to know what the Word of God says. You need to know what you need to do to get right with God. Hallelujah. I read another story about an elderly man. He was 70 years old. He was a grandfather. He made this statement. He said, I'm 70 years old. And I've never seen hell. The grandson looked up at him and said, Granddaddy, have you ever been dead yet? There's only one way. There's only one door. When you step out of this life, you better be sure. Amen. Have you ever been dead yet? If not, I wouldn't take any chances. Amen. I'd make sure that I was ready to meet Jesus. A man by the name of M.F. Rich, who was an atheist, M.F. Rich said, I would rather lie on a stove and broil for a million years. I'd rather lie on a stove and broil for a million years than go into eternity with the eternal horrors that hang over my soul. I have given my immortality for gold and its weight sinks me into an endless Hopeless, helpless hell. Hell is hot. And hell is for eternity. Let's all stand here tonight. I want you to remember something tonight. This world is reserved unto fire. This world that we live in has reservations. God has given it a time. He has given it a date when He will burn this place. Amen. You can bank on that. I'm betting on it. I'm believing in it. Amen. I'm not interested in houses. I'm not interested in cars. I'm not interested in gold and silver. I'm not interested in fame and fashion. All I'm interested in is souls. I'm driven with a desire to see souls uh, one to God. Uh, that's all I care about tonight uh, is whether or not uh, you make heaven your home, uh, whether or not uh, you're ready to meet Jesus or not. You need to realize that tonight. This world is reserved unto fire. What have you been worried about lately? Your job, your house, your car. I wouldn't worry about that too much if I were you. I'd be more worried about my soul. 
I'd be more worried about the soul of my wife, the soul of my husband, the soul of my children. Is your family saved? Is your family on its way to heaven? If not, I'd be worried. I'd be scared. Knowing what I know tonight, I'd be terrified. Amen. We need to get right with God. We really do. And after we get right with God, we need to make sure all our loved ones get right with God. Because this world is reserved unto fire. Let's reach out to Jesus right now. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, mighty God. Lord, we love you, Jesus. If you're not ready to meet Jesus tonight, if you know in your heart that if Jesus came tonight, you'd be lost. If you know you're not ready to meet Him, I want you to make a decision tonight. I want you to decide tonight that you're going to get ready. That you're going to get ready. If you're not ready to meet Jesus, you can turn from your sin tonight. You can let Jesus know, I'm not going to sin anymore. I'm not going to smoke anymore. I'm not going to drink anymore. I'm not going to lie anymore. I'm not going to cuss anymore. I'm not going to live in sin anymore, see? I'm going to get ready to meet Jesus. Hallelujah. You can make that choice tonight. You can make that choice tonight. You can turn from your sin tonight. And you can get ready to meet Jesus. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter how many times you've been baptized before. I got a brother down in Midland. He was baptized five times. But when I got there, he got baptized a sixth time. The last time, uh, it was in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remission of his sins. You can get ready to meet Jesus tonight. You can turn from your sins. Uh, you can get baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, you can get filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost tonight. God wants you to get ready tonight. God is calling you tonight. Don't be ignorant. Don't be willingly ignorant of the fact uh, that God is coming. The judgment is coming. Get ready tonight to meet Jesus. Church, uh, if you know somebody tonight uh, that needs to get ready to meet Jesus, uh, would you invite them to come down to the altar and pray with you tonight? Let's all find a place to pray tonight. Let's all reach out to Jesus tonight. If you need refilled with the Holy Ghost, tonight's a good night for you to get refilled with the Holy Ghost. Tonight's a good night for everybody to get ready to meet Jesus. Come on, church. Come on, church, let's get ready to meet Jesus. Let's make sure we're ready tonight. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 